Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Suprema Upholstery Limited is a manufacturer of quality bespoke upholstered furniture. Come along with your ideas for that perfect sofa to fit your home and let Supreme bring your ideas to fruition. We also offer a service to the contract market, including large hotel groups and small family run business. No matter how large or how small your order, you will always get that personal service from our sales team. Come along and visit our showroom. Hello everyone and a very warm welcome. Coming up on the show this week, we'll be meeting Adam Dempsey, a young boxer from Mackel in County Mayo. He's already had 60 amateur fights and has just turned professional. He's preparing and training very hard for his first professional fight in September. We'll be chatting to his manager, his trainer and some of his supporters. But first up, this month, marks the third anniversary of the sad passing of Big Tom. But his memory and his music still lives on. His son, Thomas Jr., has just recorded the song Gentle Mother, which his father had a big hit with back in 1966. Thomas is going to join us now and he's going to chat to us about his mum, his dad and his own musical career. Sunset years I sang about have slowly came upon me And I've seen so many changes I must say From the Galaxy Moor to Galway, Donegal to Tipperary I remember all the folk along the way I would like to take a moment to thank you all sincerely the pleasure of your company and your time If you enjoyed my music and the songs that I was singing I can only say the pleasure it was mine It never seemed to matter If the sun was shining brightly Or if the snow lay deep upon the ground Happy smiling faces Any time a band came to your town Now here's to all the people Some gone but not forgotten I've changed they there in the hearts of time I raise my hand in honor I thank you most sincerely And I'd like to say the pleasure has been Hello Thomas and welcome to the show. Hello Martin and thank you very much for this interview and hello to all your listeners and uh, it's great to be on it. 
Well, of course, we're here today, joined on a very special day because it's the third anniversary of your dad. God rest him. That's true, Martin. Uh, third anniversary. Daddy was dead uh, three years on Saturday, the 17th of April. Uh, time, time goes by very quickly, Martin. It does. And look, at we all miss him, but his memory lives on, his music lives on. And look, at we're all listening to his songs being played on, on all radio stations and TV shows all the time. He was very popular, and he had a great, uh, he had a great fan. Uh, he was good to his fans, and the fans stuck with him, so they did, and they're still sticking with him. Uh, a good friend of ours, uh, I think you know, Michael Cummins, done a, a tribute to him uh, last night on his show in Midwest Radio, and uh, it was an unbelievable uh, outpouring of good wishes to. Uh, the family and a tribute to the dad as well. So uh, we were just overwhelmed with the, with the response he got on the TV show. Never grow old, never grow old in the land where we never grow old. Oh, never. Of course, 1966, a special year for your dad and the mainliners, the song Gentle Mother, uh, you know, we all know that song. We've heard it so many times. And look, it was a big, big hit for your dad at the time. I'm very glad that uh, it was such a big hit and uh, it put him where he is today uh, on the top of the list. Now, of course, you've recently recorded this song and you've just, uh, you know, released it to us all. Uh, and we're looking forward to seeing you singing it now in a few minutes' time. My mother meant a lot, an awful lot to me, Martin, and uh, look at Daddy did, did as well. But me, I think Mums does have a, a special connection with, with the children and the family, so uh, that's why I've done it. And I've done it more, more so for the fans as well that couldn't, move about and get to see the grave as well. And uh, that's what I, I done it for them as well. And thank you really God, it, it, it is, uh, it, it's, it's done great, so it has. Well, it's a lovely song, of course. And of course, the video that you've done to go with the song is absolutely fantastic. But tell me this now, of course, you've lost your mum and your dad. How are you coping, you know, since, since your parents have gone? Look, uh, Martin, we have a great uh, bunch of friends around us which helps us every day to get, to get by and uh, me and Dermot Ashley and Siobhan would be very close together. You know what I mean? If anything goes wrong, we just lift the phone and talk about it and uh, you know, it's great to have that. Of course, we all know about your dad, wonderful singer and of course you've got a great, great voice as well. Tell me a little bit about your own singing career. I started very late. <laughs> I did start when I was young and I was told that in so not so many words to stay quiet. <laughs> I know the feeling. It was only in the latter years I I, um, I played with a, a woman that's no longer gone with us as well and I've done a wee video with her, um, Rose McConnell. We've done a wee song called The Daisy Chain. And uh, it was Rose that really got me back singing in the band. I used to sing two or three songs and you know what? I was nervous at first, but then when you sang it, uh, when you were singing every night, you sort of enjoyed your, your wee spots that you got, you know? And of course, you're keeping the family involvement with your uncle, Paddy King, in the band. Paddy's there and my cousin's there as well, da Dan King, and the boy that produced, and he plays in, in the band that I have, uh, Patsy McDermott, he played with Dad in the Travelers, so he did. Now, when all this pandemic is over and we can all get out and enjoy the music and the festivals and everything again, will you be hitting the road then? Will you be touring and stuff? Oh, God, I can't wait, uh, Martin. Uh, funny enough, before, before the whole pandemic last March, I was ready to hit the road. and So I had to just wipe the slate clean again. So, I had, so I'm looking forward to getting out there and meeting, the, meeting all the people that, um, that supported Dad over the years and hopefully maybe cross the water to, to yourselves and maybe see uh, how, how, how I get on over there. Well, listen, Thomas, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a special day, of course, your dad's third anniversary. And look, we're looking forward to seeing you here in the UK before too long. 
Well, I hope so, Martin. And you are doing well over there with the pandemic. It used to be opened up long before us, so it mightn't be too long to I might I might venture out over there, so I might and see see there's the people still want me over there. <laughs> oh, you'll be very welcome here. You'll be very welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Take care. We're looking forward to your singing, Gentle Mother. Thanks, Martin, and thanks again to all your listeners and all your viewership. Thank you. By the side of a clear crystal fountain There stands a lonely churchyard closely by there's a tombstone decorated with primroses In the memory of a loved one passed away Shall I never see you more, gentle mother? Where the wild flowers grow Gathering flowers as they grew Amongst the wild wood And I cherish was no trouble on to you Some children take a liking to their parents While some others Fill their mother's hearts with pain But someday they will be sorry For their blindness When crying Will not bring her back again Shall I never see you more, gentle mother? In the fields where the wild flowers grow, I am sorry for the loss I can't recover. Need the umbrella. Lies my gentle mother's love Need young willow Lies my gentle mother's love It was lovely chatting to Thomas Jr. and we wish him the very best of luck with his new recording of Gentle Mother. Now we're going to take a little break. Don't go away. In part two we'll be meeting Adam Dempsey, a great young boxer from Ackle in County Mayo. Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. is an award-winning independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Suprema Upholstery Limited is a manufacturer of quality bespoke upholstered furniture. Come along with your ideas for that perfect sofa to fit your home and let Supreme bring your ideas to fruition. We also offer a service to the contract market. 
including large hotel groups and small family-run business. No matter how large or how small your order, you will always get that personal service from our sales team. Come along and visit our showroom. Welcome back. Now it's time to meet Adam Dempsey, a great young boxer from Ackell in County Mayo. He's already had 60 amateur fights with a fantastic record. Here's Adam. In the clearing stands a boxer and a fighter by his trade. And he carries the reminder of every love that laid him down and cut him till he cried out in his anger and his shame. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, but the fighter still remains. La la la, la 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 la. I'm originally from Dublin and Tala, but I moved down to Ackle about nine years ago, and that's when I started boxing. So I never boxed when I was in Dublin. And of course, a lot of your family is involved in boxing as well. Uh, yeah, my two brothers as well, they're Irish champions as well. But with, um, they've had quite a few fights as well. Uh, about the same as me, 60 fights. So, so tell me about your uh, amateur career so far. I know you're turned pro now, but um, before you turn pro. Um, yeah, I've had, as I said, I've quite a few fights. So I've 60 fights in total. I have seven losses and uh, 53 wins. So I have seven male titles, seven Connick titles, and I'm Irish champion as well. I suppose the biggest accomplishment was making it to the Europeans, where I boxed for bronze, but I lost against Russia. And he was world champion, so. Well, congratulations on all that success. So you're coming into the pro business now as yeah. a real good record behind you as, as an amateur. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've had like, quite the experience in the amateur, so. Just need to change a few things now and adjust to the pro style and it should be all right then. Yeah, so now you've turned pro, you're here with Mark, uh, here with the Shamrock Boxing Club. What's your ambitions now and what's the next step for you? Um, making my pro debut will be the next step. So 25th, I have a date now, 25th of September, so I'll be training for that. So what's the build up for that now? How are you going to go on from here on into, I know with COVID and everything else now, but can you manage to get your training, uh, keep it going? Uh, yeah, so like I'll be flying back and forth between here and Luton anyway, and I get, I get tested all the time anyway, so it's not really that bad, but um, yeah, no, I should be all right. And uh, tell me, what is it like living in Ackle? Uh, there wouldn't be much boxing going on around Ackle, would there? Um, not really at the moment, no, because all the clubs are shut, unfortunately, because of COVID. But um, yeah, no, it's pretty good. Like, I mean, there was, when I moved down to Ackle first, there was really nothing to do. So that's kind of how I started boxing. And I know your dad opened uh, an amateur boxing club there, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So he opened the club for us, basically, when we moved down. It's kind of boring, so he was like, do you just want to um, start boxing? And we were like, yeah, that's a good idea. And he was like, let me check where the nearest clubs are. And he searched them up, and they're kind of far, like Westport, you know, Westport. Yeah. It's about 45 minutes from Mackle, like it's yeah. too far to be driving. So he said, you know, I'm just going to set up my own club. So that's basically what he did. <laughs> so. He's the head coach of Arco Boxing Club now. Well, listen, we wish you the very, very best to look with your first fight as professional in September. And we look forward to seeing you getting a, a good win. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, well, uh, I've known a few people in Ackle Island for about uh, 20, 25 years. And um, he started amateur boxing with his dad. And uh, they gave me a call and said, have a look. So they sent me a little video of him and said, could he come over and train and you know help him out? And uh, it's taken off from there, really. He's, he's come over quite a few times now. Um, so yeah, for about five or six years, he's, we've been working with him behind the scenes in his amateur career, um, taking no credit away from his dad. His dad's done a fantastic job with him in the amateurs. We've just helped out now and then when we want it, he's wanted us to. Yeah, but of course, he's turned professional now. It's a different game, isn't it? In, in the amateurs, you're p punching for points. In the pros, you're punching for money. And they're the two differences. You know, the punches hurt a lot more, smaller gloves, longer rounds. But he's got some good pedigree background from his amateur career. So 
he'll do fine. I mean, there's not a great deal of work we have to do with Adam because of his good pedigree in the amateurs. It's just um, helping him with his style, certain things we do with our feet, and certain way we throw punches differently to the amateurs. But apart from that, he's got the basics. That it's, it's really all there. It's just developing him into a pro now. How difficult is it for you now to train him when he's not here absolutely all the time? Um, it's not too difficult because we've got the fantastic world of Zoom and Teams. And his dad, Ken, um, is a fantastic guy. We get on really well. So we coordinate with each other and we'll send instructions. I'll send a plan. And he'll follow that through in his, in his gym in Ackle Island. And then he'll come back over to us when he trains for the fights. But he'll normally come over uh, for about 10 to 12 weeks at a time. And of course, I know that somebody away from home, it's always nice if they're happy in a place where they come to stay. I know that you've really looked after Adam when he's come here, made him feel at home. And I think that's, that's got a lot to do with the way to settle him in and prepare him for a fight as well. It is, you know, he's, he's, my house is his home while he's over here. You know, he has a free reign of the house. Um, he, he's a pleasure to have. So he's like, a, he's like a, the son I never had, really. Shamrock Boxing Club started nearly about 45 years ago in Luton. Uh, it was formed by, amongst other people, my father and my late father. Um, and he formed the club for all the young people and mm. formed as an amateur boxing club for the, for the local community. And we've been around in uh, one guise or another over all them years, self-funding, uh, supported by the Irish community of Luton. So we're very, very proud of our Irish uh, heritage and very proud of the people of Luton that have supported us all them years to get us to where the stage where we're at. Um, so from them humble beginnings we started in, to be honest, it was probably the size of a double garage, a wooden shed. And we've grown and grown and grown and uh, we've had numerous amateur champions over the years. We've had professional champions at every level. Um, I took over from when my father passed away and uh, I've worked at all, all levels of boxing. Now you're Adam's manager. I am indeed. Um, going forward now, how are you looking to promote him and get him the right fights? Because it's all about getting him the right fights at this moment in time. Well, t in today's boxing, it's all about the matchmaking and uh, I have a lot of experience at matchmaking, uh, both on a national and international level. So Adam will box, first of all, on the Shamrock Boxing Promotion shows. It'll be big at his debut on, uh, I think it's the 25th of September in Bedford, a uh, show there. Um, and then we'll progress him gently. You know, Adam is a very decorated amateur, a very gifted boxer. He came here, obviously Mark, he worked with Mark during his amateur career. And uh, when he turned professional, you know, there was only really one place he wanted to come. He's been over here now two weeks, and uh, to be honest, uh, the, the pedigree stands out. I think he's a great prospect. He's one of the best prospects I've seen in, in the last few years on a professional level. So from, from the Irish community here, and it's nice to have them come over home from home, over to Luton, to the Ar lovely Irish community here, as you know. And uh, I'm sure he'll have a lot of followings because he's a genuinely nice lad, as well as being a terrific boxer. And well, the Luton Irish Forum's here to support the whole of um, the Irish community in Luton. Um, Shamrock Boxing contacted us to tell us about Adam and that he'll be over. And we just thought it was great that we could support a young Irish person coming over and achieving to his dreams. Yeah. Well, it's great that you've taken the interest to, to support him. And of course, Luton Irish Forum does wonderful work here in Luton for the Irish community. It's just great to be able to support um, the Irish community in different ways. It's particularly great that we can support young Irish people, whether they're from Ireland or whether they're born here. So it's just uh, great to see young people doing something positive. It's great to support Adam, be a good role model for work hard for what you want to achieve. Like we know it's um, great to get um, young people involved in something positive. Boxing's a great sport um, that teaches you discipline, um, also um, to set goals and work towards them. We have a strong culture of sports in Irish culture and it's just great to support a local club. Lovely to meet you, Fiona. Thank you. Uh, Luton Irish Live, um, it's a radio show, Irish and country music mainly, um, which I've been presenting for Diverse FM for the last, I think it's 11 years coming up, 12, 12 years next month in fact, and it goes out uh, Tuesday evenings, 7 till 9pm. 
and congratulations, you've done a great job during the pandemic, keeping everybody you know, cheered up with your music, your interviews and a bit of banter as well and fun. Well, we, we do our best. We did have a few weeks off ourselves because we were shut down and we had cases where people had been hospitalised at studios. Not ours, thankfully, but uh, safety first was the priority all the time, you know. Of course, Jim, you've got a great tie-up with the lads here today and uh, Shamrock Boxing Club. And uh, they were telling me there about a lovely story about Tyson Fury. Yes, of course, a few years ago now, Mervyn got in touch with me uh, regarding Shamrock and uh, Tyson Fury coming to town, along with the wonderful Mickey Hart. So uh, we did a lovely bit in the Arndale Centre, lots of filming going on there. And uh, I think it was that evening as well, we had Tyson on our radio show as well. So, uh, and he, he's then, he then visited St Margaret's Club in Luton as well. It, you know, it was a great occasion and uh, such, such characters, the two of them, Mickey Hart, and Tyson Fury, but thanks to Mervyn and Mark here and all the lads and Adam Dempsey, well, you've interviewed him today. He's going to be some prospect, isn't he? Yeah. Well, we're hoping to get Adam on the show nearer the, the, the fight, which we hope to be in September. Yeah. So we'll hope to have him just on the show for an interview prior to that big fight. It was lovely to meet Adam. What a fantastic young man. And we're all looking forward to and wishing him the very best of luck with his first professional fight in September. Now, that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Henry McGlade is back with us next Thursday night at 7 o'clock with his show from County Mayo. And we are here, as usual, at 7.30 with the Irish in the UK. Until then, look after yourselves. <laughs>